everyone, I'm Nicolas Brass, here on Soundpain to introduce you to my new virtual instrument, the Tin Can Rhodes keyboard. One day, I found this sound. And of course, the question was, how many notes can I make with this? 37. I made 37 notes. My problem was, I didn't have all those tin cans available, so I had to eat them. And do you know what's usually inside this kind of tin cans? Raviolis and fruits in syrup. And not good ones. All my relatives and family hate me now, but I have my three keyboards. All the tin cans are the same, the difference is the length of the road. The main clear sound is the road, but I also like the sound of the edge of the tin can. There is some steel drum vibes. For the deep sampling of all the notes, I took them out of the keyboard to hang them up for maximum sustain and clarity. I'm sure I will use it a lot more as a virtual instrument, it's so much better. I need six microphones to record the physical version. I don't even have six microphones. And now you will be able to play this instrument without having to disassemble it and store it. Thank you, Soundbait. Hey everyone, my name is Dan Shimolinsky. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. I am a bassist, sound designer, and composer living in Los Angeles, and we are back checking out another really fun library this week. This is from the genius mind of Nicholas Brass, and it is the Tin Can Rods. Now I know Nicholas just explained what this instrument is, what it looks like, and it's my job to show you what it sounds like in sound paint. I would describe the sound of this instrument as kind of a crossover between maybe like a steel drum, some kind of tubular bell sound. But as I've said many times before, instruments that are created from metal have an inherent resonance to them that just absolutely is so fun to play with when you're designing sounds and getting it into the throw of things in sound paint. And this library is no exception. It is such a beautiful bell tone kind of characteristic thing. And uh, I think that's enough talking. Let's just play through these parts. Now you get three parts with this library and they are super different from one another. The first one involves hitting it with a hard mallet, one hitting the can, one hitting the rod, and then the third part is a soft mallet hitting the rod. I'm gonna demo all three now for you so you can hear the key difference. Let's just start with the C major scale and kind of switch between the parts. So you're getting a little bit of everything, everything from the kind of like super resonant bell, almost music box kind of sounding stuff to more of the like pitched high gongs maybe. It's very, very different from one another. This first part I find to be kind of the most interesting from the initial attack point of view. It's a lot more of a complex harmonic palette than the other ones. There's just so much happening. Probably because you're hitting the actual can itself, so you're getting kind of that fifth above and just really a lot happening in the harmonic sequence. And such a long, beautiful sustain. I think he mentioned that he suspended these cans and took them out of its configuration to get that sustain and it just works brilliantly. So if you're going for a really interesting attack, a long sustain, and a lot of harmonic information, I'd go with this part. Moving on to the hard mallet hitting the rod itself. This also has a lot of harmonic information, but it's different. It's a little more uh, filtered down, if you will. I think this is probably the closest to like a very robust musical box or perhaps a chime clock, an antique chime clock, but a more defined tone than the first part definitely still has a very hard attack. And it's just a joy to work with. Very, very cool. So you get a little bit of a natural detune from note to note. I personally like that a lot. I think it's really kind of interesting and adds to sort of like the harmonics that arise from slight dissonances. Moving on to the final part. This is a soft mallet hitting the rod. And this is to me kind of evocative of like metal bowls or meditation music. You'll see I kind of went that direction in the program section with this part. Very mellow, very defined pitch center. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play and just, yeah, you can kind of get to zen out. Mm -hmm. 
Now, obviously, because it's kind of pitch stretched in the lower area of the keyboard, you're gonna have a little more of a delayed attack, right? It's a little more immediate the higher you go. One way around this is you can actually pull up two identical parts and limit one part to just kind of the lower key range wherever you're feeling things start to get slow and then assign offset to that layer specifically to kind of nudge it up a little bit in the attack so you can have a little bit of a faster response. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say that part two is gonna be kind of my lower note, like when I was going down to hit those, those bass tones, that's gonna be only part two's utility. I'm gonna kind of feel around and see when I start to feel that the attack is getting a little too slow for my liking. Let's say around that F. So since part one is uh, not my bass register, I'm gonna limit that to basically that F, I think F3. A good little trick to know what that pitch is is just to look at the bottom of your screen. It says MIDI what note you're playing. On some stuff like with the uh, MIDI CCs, you can just move it and it jumps, but for limiting key ranges, uh, you kind of have to just know where you're at. So even that's a little slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, do C4. So that means that part one is gonna be kind of just the fast attack, all upper stuff. And then on part two, that is gonna be my lower range. And so I'm gonna drop B3 to limit part two to just low end stuff. Then you go into your rack section here and you grab your offset tool and we go part two. The note I think I was using as a bass was uh, G flat, so. Now your bass range is a little more responsive. So in that example, I don't even remember what I was playing. Something like that, right? So with libraries that extend beyond the natural range of the instrument, that's a really great way to kind of hack the time stretch aspect of it. You also can use the time rack to do this exact same thing. So I'll reset the offset to just where it was and go part two, let's speed it up until I feel like it's reacting the way I want it to. There we go. So, you know, various ways around the pitch stretch, time stretch issue. So that's a brief look at the tin can rod library parts. Let's head over to the program section to see them in action. I think I've got about 20 here for you. Tried to go in as many different directions as I could, as I always do. And uh, I think because there's not that many, that means that we can play through them all. So let's start at the top with ARP Thought. Love that delay, love me some delay. So we have two identical parts here, one slightly detuned into the ARP, which I've just put in a nice little sequence below. And I think we have a tempo synced delay. Yes, we do, which is super awesome. So that's just always gonna be exactly the same. And our ladder filter is controlled by the mod wheel. This one's called Bell Tone, and you are going to notice that a healthy amount of reverb makes this thing just sound all the better. Nice. 
This one is called Deep Meditation, and I'm taking that soft mallet rod part and putting it through two bucket brigade delays, a rain delay, shimmer reverb, and then compression at the very, very end. And I don't know what our mod wheel has going on. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yes, so it has dynamic sustain, so that's gonna give you volume, velocity control on the mod wheel, and then also the pitch mix of the shimmer reverb. So as we raise it, we will get a more defined pitch out of our shimmer. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> I love that one so, so much. So if you're into the mellower, more ambient kind of compositional styles or you're uh, scoring one of those uh, meditation apps, it's a good one. This one's called Dreamland. Can you sense a theme? <laughs> That low stuff is... Love it, it's a little bit crunchier, it's a little bit lower fidelity. That's that's some lo-fi magic right there. This next one is a bit of an obscure reference. I called it early 2000s Rev. I can't put my finger on it, but I basically was playing around with reversing the part and I was trying to see what kind of sounds I could get. And it reminded me of this like reverse effect through a delay with like a very fast reverb that you would often hear in like early 2000s TV. Am I completely off base here? <laughs> or like scoring, it's just like the, the reverse effect stuff was real, real big for a while there. And this specific sound just kind of like transported me 20 years ago. So tell me if you agree. off base does anybody feel that no moving on here's one called filter motion for uh reasons that you can see on your screen kind of love how the filter plays off of that just like natural noise in what's going on that kind of like sizzly factor yeah it's really really cool mod wheel obviously controls the speed of your lfo on that so you get some really modulated sounding effects here's a cute one wrote you a little game theme a little bit of a video game kind of style theme using the bit brush here a little bit of digital distortion some eq stuff and compressor at the end here you go controlling the sample rate with mod wheel it kind of makes it sound ring moddy if you will oh 
yeah, I actually did get a DM about this in the ARP section asking how to put chords into the, this is one of the most capable arpeggiators, sequencers, if you will, whatever, I've ever used. And it will, if you change the chord type, I think even if you don't, but specifically if you put chord type in there, it, you can grab a chord for each step and it's really, really useful. So that's how to do that. Here's one called Groove in Attack, and this is playing off of the different attack speeds for velocities, uh, range on the keyboard. Basically, it's a very straight ahead sequence, but there's a little bit of a natural swing to it just based on where the attacks fall with each note being triggered, and I think it's the coolest thing. Kind of that like it's a little bit of a, a swing factor to it which i think is just awesome then i made you three main programs kind of ideal treatments for each of the parts you've got one for this guy this guy and then also this guy here and basically just a little bit of eq some compression and some lexi reverb So if you just want to dial up a great treatment, something super, super fast to get to a specific sound. It's a really easy way to do it. Here's a trick that I just love using called Hit and Rev. I've named a few programs Hit and Rev over my time uh, doing programs for sound paint. And basically it entails similar or the same part. This is similar, obviously, because it's a little bit different. But part one is the main attack. And then part two is a reversed part that comes in after the attack. So hit and swell. You could definitely write that orchestrally. But from a sound paint perspective, it's Hit Rev. And then, you know, I had to do a music box, which really just entailed using the hard mallet rod part, uh, plus a bit of high pass filter and EQing, not much to it at all. Music box, instant music box. Here's one called Only Attacks, and it utilizes a very, very fast decay on our envelope, trying to isolate the different attacks across the spectrum of the keyboard. And I found the hard mallet rod attacks to kind of be the most interesting and diverse in terms of just what you get from note to note. So kind of the analog clicks of this library, if you will. I always like to use the phaser when it makes sense and with very resonant instruments, it always makes sense. So this one's called phase keys. and you get to control the rate with the mod wheel on this part. A super modulated sound. I mean, again, this stuff is great, great source material to go in any direction. This is obviously one of the more extreme ones, as is this next one called Retro Air Keys. Using 
mod wheel to control the amount of the chorus there. But yeah, isn't that the coolest? I was trying to go for some kind of like very 80s, 90s sampled air key kind of sound. I think it really works. This next one's called Slap Bounce and uh, it is exactly just that. Very slappy, very quick kind of slap back delay happening there. Love the slight, slight differences in the attack. It's it's cool. Really adds kind of an organic naturalness to the sound. Here's soft resonant keys. soft and subtle and that's one of those situations where you know you bury it under enough stuff we've got a ladder filter phaser compressor some eq action here going into alexi reverb lfos on the pitch three instances loaded and it's like it kind of just becomes this thing that is greater than the source material itself but because of what the source material is it sounds like nothing else in a certain way oh well, y'all are gonna like this one this one's called wind chimes and i'm just gonna play it for you and then i'll explain what's going on <laughs> Sounds like wind chimes, right? So basically I put a sequence in the arpeggiator here. And assigned a random LFO to the attack of part one. And basically there's always that like one wind chime that's just a consistent pitch, right? That's just happening almost in kind of like a, a cyclical way, but it's random. So on part number two here, I just did a one note same, and I put a random LFO on the volume of it, so it only happens every once in a while. So trying to automate as much randomness as possible to the characteristics of each of the notes, much like the randomness of wind chimes. And finally, let's end with a pretty one. This one is called Zen, and uh, it's intended for just that. So Mod Wheel brings up a little bit of LFO action on the filter and also more digital delay. What a pretty instrument, right? Isn't it just beautiful to work with? And just the range of sonic possibilities here is truly endless. I know I've said that before, but with this kind of source material, with this much resonance and three different parts with such vastly different approaches to the attacks, it's a total joy to work with. And it's gonna be one of those secret sauce libraries for sure, for me at least. These metallic tones, kind of bell tones, you know, falling into that category of stuff, you really can't have enough. I only have about 20 programs here, but literally, I could have made 200. I really, as at a certain point, I was like, yeah, that kind of covers the spectrum. But I absolutely cannot wait to see what you all do with this one, because it is definitely one of the most diverse, capable brass instruments yet. It's just super fun to play, so I really do encourage you to pick it up. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in, and I will see you next time. This is Shimmy, signing out. Take care.